Welcome to this video series on frequently asked questions about the Java language. In this ongoing series of videos, we'll answer commonly asked questions about the Java programming language. You'll come away from the video with a solution to your question. In the presentation section of the video, we'll provide background information on the topic. Then we'll go into the lab and work out a solution. Next, we'll discuss the solution from an application security point of view. We'll let you know what to watch out for to ensure your code stays secure. Like and subscribe to get more great content like this for free. Ready to get started? Let's go. The question today is, how can you sort an array list of custom objects by property? And just to be clear, we want to be able to sort an array list of custom objects regardless of the data type. Great question. To answer, we'll need to discuss the differences between comparable and comparator. java.lang.comparable is an interface. Classes that implement the comparable interface provide a natural ordering of the data so they can be sorted automatically. When we say automatically, it means simply that the order is obvious. For example, we see here some of the Java classes that implement the comparable interface. They include classes such as byte, long, integer, short, double, float, big integer, and big decimal. Keep in mind that the numeric types, long, integer, float, double, etc., refer to the class wrappers and not to the primitive types. The natural ordering for these classes is assigned numerical ordering. Next is character. The order for this class is unsigned numerical. The Boolean wrapper class also implements the comparable interface, and in this case, false comes before true. And we see a few more examples, including file, string, date, and collation key. If a class does not implement the comparable interface, you'll get a class cast exception at runtime if you try to sort them. The comparable interface consists of the following method, public int compare to, which takes a type as an argument. The method compares the object it is passed as an argument with the object of the class that implements the interface. The method returns a negative integer, zero, or positive integer to indicate the parameter is less than, equal to, or greater than the value of the object to which it is being compared. So what's the purpose of the comparator? java.lang.comparator is used if you wish to sort objects by something other than their natural ordering, or if you wish to sort objects that don't implement the comparable interface. To perform this type of sort, you'll need to use the comparator. When implemented and instantiated, the comparator is an object that encapsulates the ordering you wish to impose on the objects you're comparing. Much like the comparable interface, the comparator interface consists of a single method. It also returns an int value, but takes two arguments. The code must compare the two arguments and return a negative integer, zero, or positive integer, depending on if the first argument is less than, equal to, or greater than the second. In the coding section, we'll look at how to use the comparable as well as the comparator interface for custom sorting. Let's look at some code. We'll be using the IntelliJ IDEA as the IDE to develop our solution. Let's start by creating a class called SortList01. We'll use the live template PSVM to create our main method. And let's create an array list as posed in the question of strings called people. And let's add some people to our array list. We'll add the user's first names, Tom, Bill, Sue, and Mary. And let's print that array list out using the print line statement. When we run the code, we get our list of people. Let's invoke the sort method of the collections class and sort the array list of people. The java.util.collections class has been around since Java 1.2 and consists of static methods that operate on or return collections. After sorting, we print out the sorted list of people. We 
When we run the code, we get the sorted list of people, which is in lexicographic order. Remember from our earlier slide, the classes of type string implement the comparable interface, and thus there is a natural ordering of two strings, in this case alphabetic, that is utilized to produce a sorted list of strings. So at this point, we've demonstrated the use of the comparable interface. It's simple to use for the classes that implement it, such as string, date, and big decimal. Now let's look at how we can use the comparator interface in a class, which has no natural ordering except for what we prescribe. Back in our code, on line 8, we'll replace the string type with the yet to be created person type. Now let's create a class called person. And create some class level data fields. First is name of type string, then employee ID of type int. And finally is hire date of type java util date. Notice all of these fields individually have a natural sorting order, but the class person, because it is a custom class, does not. Let's generate our constructor using the code creation feature of IntelliJ IDEA. And we'll do the same thing and create a two-string method, including all the members of the class. Let's go back to the sort list 01 class, and we'll add an object called simple date format of type simple date format. and give it a pattern that we'll use to format our dates. We'll use month, day, and year. This object will help us format the data that we'll use to create our person objects. Now let's change our simple strings consisting of first names that we pass to the add methods to full-blown person objects. For the first person, we'll say new person, then we'll keep his name Tom, We'll make his employee ID number 000 and set his hire date to January 1st, 1998. Let's copy that code to save some typing. And let's give Bill an employee ID of 242 and record that he was hired weirdly also on January 1st again, but in the year 2005. Next, Sue has an employee ID of 872 and she was hired on March 4th, 2007. And finally, Mary has an employee ID of 982 and was also hired on January 1st, but in the year 2019. Let's get rid of the call to sort and just print out the data as we have it now. We see the data printed out in a manner that almost looks like JSON, but not quite. Scrolling through, we see that we have our users and all their associated data elements nicely displayed. Now let's create a comparator to sort our data. There are many ways we could create the class and implement our comparator, but for this exercise, we'll create the class within our person class. 
The comparator we will create will sort the person objects by their employee ID, which we know is an integer. Because it's an integer and already has a natural ordering, we can take advantage of that fact in our compare method code that we write. We'll create the class as public static and call it comp by ID and implement the comparator interface. Our comparison type will be person, so we'll add that. Then we implement the compare method, which takes two arguments. In our compare method, we access the employee ID data elements. Recall that the compare method will return a negative integer, zero, or positive integer, depending on if the first argument is less than, equal to, or greater than the second. So in our equation, if the employee ID for the person object 01 is smaller than the employee ID for employee 02, the equation will return a negative number, meaning the first argument, employee ID, is less than the second employee ID. If the IDs are the same, the equation will return zero. And if the first ID is larger than the second ID, we will return a positive number. Back in our application, let's invoke the sort method again. We'll pass in the people array list again for the first argument, and for the second argument, we'll invoke our comparator. We can invoke it via the person class and call person.compById. Let's print out a message to indicate that we'll be printing strings in sorted order. And we'll run a for loop to display the output. For each person p and people, we'll print out the value of p. And let's run that code. We see a list of people, but now they're sorted by employee ID from smallest to largest. In this example, we demonstrate how we can create a custom comparator to impose an order on a group of objects that have no inherent order other than what we impose on it. We could create additional comparators as well, and sort by the higher date, do a reverse sort, and so forth. So let's look at the security aspects of sorting custom objects. The main thing to look out for is to make sure when you're using comparable or comparators, the comparison technique you use must be accurate and complete. All the custom comparisons you do must be compatible with equals. If they're not, data could be missed and there could be cases where the data is considered duplicate and could be lost. How can this impact security, you ask? Clearly, this would be impactful to the integrity and trust of your system. A system that produces bad results and undermines the trust in your system is as bad as a system that's been compromised by an attacker. Write good code and be an example for your team and organization on how to do things correctly. The documentation for the comparator and comparable API should be consulted to ensure that all the conditions for comparison must be met. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with others. Right now, while it's still available, go to www.beginsecuretraining.com to get our free ebook on how to write more secure Java code. When writing code, remember to always begin secure.